Hello, welcome to the Senior Design Project of Seablick, an underwater optical communication system. I am Brian Kerstether, and we are joined by David Santiago and Shannon Abdallah. In this day and age, we are used to quick access of data, whether we are at a park or a restaurant, or we're walking through our neighborhood, we have the ability to access the internet at very quick speeds. However, if you are in a submarine, submerged underwater, you are not as fortunate when it comes to data bandwidth. Think about it, you have a submarine underneath the ocean. How do you communicate to it? Today there are two solutions to provide communication to submarines underwater. The first solution is a technology known as VLF, or Very Low Frequency RF. The disadvantage of VLF technology is you have extremely low data transfer rates. Rates as low as 300 bits per second. The second solution that exists today is communication by wire. You have a boat that's floating in the ocean or in some body of water, and you have a tether that tethers the submarine to the boat. Through this tether, communication can occur. The advantage of using a tether for communication is you have fast communication speeds, fast enough where you can send live video feeds to and from the submarine. However, the issue with communication by a tether is it severely limits the range of the submarine. For instance, you have your boat or ship here. You have your submarine here. The submarine can only go as far as the tether allows. Seablick seeks to solve the issue of high bandwidth underwater communication. What we hope to provide with Seablick is both high data transfer rates and mobility. Shavin will introduce the basic idea of Seablick. Seablick consists of two main components, a laser transmitter and optical receiver. The laser transmitter contains a market controller which encodes the data onto a 400 nanometer modulated blue laser beam. Then the photo detector in the receiver takes a signal and uses a microcontroller to decode the bits. This provides data rates in the tens of thousands of bits per second. Now we are going to go to David Santiago and see Seablick in action. Hello. The following presentation is a demo of Seablick. Let's take a look. We will present the following modules. This module right here is the transmitter module. The transmitter module consists of a microcontroller, an analog switch, and some circuits. These circuits right here will act as logic to control the analog switch. The output will go into our optics, which will be represented with this blue wire. The output will go through an underwater environment. This output will be received by the receiver module. The receiver module consists of some receiver circuitry and a microcontroller. This microcontroller right here will serve as our ADC. Our oscilloscope will be recording what data will be received at the receiver and our computer will be able to process that data. To send a message, it will look at our computer. This right here is our transmitter code. We will input a string, some test data, and we will fire this string using a nice button. Pressing this button will send the signal. We will be able to view it on the oscilloscope and on the receiver module. Let's send the signal. Pressing this button, we will start to see some pulses on the oscilloscope. Right here is our oscilloscope probe connecting to our oscilloscope. Let's press the button again. Pressing the button, we see that our oscilloscope receives a signal. That signal is then captured by our ADC. And the ADC sends it to our computer and prints our statement. So, you just saw Seablick in action. You saw the breadboard, you saw the oscilloscope, you saw the laptop, you saw that our communication system is able to transfer information. What you saw was our working prototype. However, 
due to the unfortunate circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to entirely complete the final iteration of CBLIC because we were unable to access electronics laboratories at UNLV due to social distancing measures. However, we were able to design nearly 10 circuit boards for this project. And we have the final circuit boards that if we had the opportunity to populate would be our final design. I will share these printed circuit boards with you right now. The first printed circuit board that we have is this one right here. And this printed circuit board here is the laser modulator board. The laser modulator board takes parallel information from the microcontroller and converts it to serial information, which then causes a laser to turn on and off very quickly, such that information is converted from an electrical signal to an optical signal. And this optical signal then propagates through an optical communication channel. The optical communication channel can be one of many things. It can be open air, or it can be an underwater environment. We have an additional board called the laser board. This is a populated laser board. This is a populated laser modulator board. The populated laser board plugs directly into the laser modulator board. Furthermore, we have a receiver board. The receiver consists of a pin photodiode, a trans impedance amplifier, as well as a comparator. The CBLIC underwater optical communication system consists of two microcontroller boards. There's a microcontroller board on the transmitter side and on the receiver side. It should be noted that CBLIC uses a powerful laser. This laser has a wavelength of 450 nanometers, which places the laser beam in the blue spectrum. The blue spectrum specifically penetrates water the best. Due to the high optical power of the CBLIC laser, it should be noted that laser goggles are recommended when using or testing the CBLIC system. In addition to the electronics, we have made use of four optical elements, two frontal lenses, a neutral density filter, and a band pass filter. Now we go to Shannon, where she will talk about the cost analysis of our project. One of the goals of CBLIC is to provide an affordable solution to a problem that people may have. For this reason, it only costs about $200 to build a single CBLIC system. We spent about $2,400 on the research and development of this product, which consists of optics, printed circuit boards, and printed circuit board components. Now, from everyone at CBLIC, David, Shannon, and myself, we thank you for listening to this presentation regarding our senior design project.